better angle than me, too. Uh, I've, I've, I've worked on I did it once. So a lot of times before... Can we see when, a show of hands? Sorry, how many people again took toning, coding challenges? I'm writing some of the stuff down. Almost the whole room. Wow. How about prior to the interview? Prior to the interview. Yes. So a lot of times when you're taking coding challenges prior to the interview, no one actually is at, uh, looking or actually or ever even sees your coding challenge. A lot of times what they do is it'll be run through um, uh, sort of um, uh, unit tests will be created that'll sort of figure out, uh, try to create all the different edge cases uh, of or possible answers of what your of what could come out from your uh, the question and then it gets run through and if you actually miss an edge case then a lot of times that will automatically disqualify you. so um, I'm one of the first things that everyone should do is make sure that they see all edge cases in all in the coding challenge to make sure that it never fails for any reason and if it does fail then an error message pops up um, and a lot of times it, it, there might be several applicants that actually pass that. And if that happens, what they'll do is they'll have a time, a timer, and they'll figure out which algorithm is quicker. If person A or person B, um, if they have only like time for like 10 interviews and there's like 12 applicants that actually pass all edge cases, they'll figure out which are the quick, 10 quickest times. So if yours is not one of the 10 quickest times, because it's like 0 .001 seconds and yours is, and the other guys are all 0 .0001 seconds, then you're sort of disqualified right away, and that's why, um, if you, and that's the way, if like you have one thousand applicants for one job, um, you can narrow it down to like maybe twenty people. So uh, everyone, when they're making their coding challenges, they should make sure that the algorithms are very uh, tight, fast, and um, that all educations, all educations are solved for. Um, the other thing is you want to make clean code, because if your code is clean, then it's sort of expected that um, you just pass it from one. Um, coder to another. If I'm, if we're sitting on a team, and all of a sudden uh, I'm writing code that looks like crap, and I don't document it well, and then I pass it off to Nick, and Nick looks at it, he's not going to know what the fuck to do with it. So he has to sit there and write new, um, all new code. Because even if my code is good, and it's not, but if it's not documented well and it's not clean, then no one's going to be able to use it. Because it basically essentially becomes garbage, and it's not because it's not scalable. And at our we're, what, what we're building here is we want to make all our products and all our code scalable so that we can continue to not only have a uh, hundred people here that one day we can bring it to the, this meeting could be in like another room in every single city in the country and we have to make everything and think about everything as being scalable and um, in order to do that we have to make sure everything's clean code everything's uh, documented well and that um, so in your coding challenges make sure that you Document your code, um, write or notes everywhere, um, and also just make sure that the code is clean and it's easily readable. And, uh, and that's essentially makes you a valuable member of a team. Um, and that's why everyone knows that you're going to be a valuable member of a team. Um, uh, those are things that people are looking for. So how, how many of you have experience working in a team environment on, on a project? How many don't? So mostly they all do, okay? All right, so a lot of, the other thing that we're looking for is in GitHub. And um, when, if you're gonna put together a GitHub, uh, put together a lot of different code in your GitHub files, uh, if a lot, we've seen a lot of applicants that were trying to apply for us that told us they didn't even have a GitHub. Um, and if you've worked in a team for years, I know, you know it's only a few people have never here have not worked for a team, but. Um, if we look at your code and it's not well documented, we're going to assume that you've never worked for a team. So you'll be, and we know that it sort of takes, it makes it a little bit harder for us to determine whether um, you'd be, a, be able to code with uh, multiple individuals on a team. And um, a lot of times when we actually, because when we're working, as working as a team, we have to break down code into different modules, which is, uh, so, so if one person can get one section, like Al could be sitting there with one section of the code, Nick could be on another section, I could be on a third section, and it all looks like it's one developer work together. One clean coded, uh, well-documented uh, project. The, the if I, if, if one of the main obstacles I've had to post stuff on GitHub is that I'm just not quite sure what problem I should be solving and putting the solutions. Uh, you should so. be just fighting coding challenge uh, just online. Coding, so it doesn't have to be something that nobody else is doing. I mean, you got to just, well, yeah, you want to stand out. 
you, you want to stand out. So, I mean, you should be... But something is better than nothing. Yeah, something is better than nothing. If you can do something extremely innovative, I guarantee you will find a job. So, uh, um, think of something, uh, um, come up with your uh, creative idea. Um, but if you can't, find something online that, like coding challenges that have been um, done with other, uh, there's a million coding challenges you can find online. So just, and even if I just put up the solution to coding challenge, that's... It's better than nothing. Um, right? But the more detailed it is, the more innovative it is, uh, the, the better your prospects of finding a job. Um, if you find something, and you could literally, like, a lot of places, people, uh, this is the first thing they look at on your resume is your GitHub. They might not even look at your experience of where you've worked in the past. Because they, because there's, um... Because GitHub, they can see what Because they can see what you've done. And there's a lot of places that, uh, a lot of really good companies hire crap employees. So, that's, because they made mistakes and other people, but they, from the GitHub, if, if you have a good GitHub, you might do call in, but then when you get called in for the job, for the interview, make sure you can explain everything yeah. of what's in the GitHub and what's uh, what's in your code. Any, any other tips on being a good t part of the team? Yeah, I mean, well, that essentially makes it so well documented code will make it so that it's easier for you to be part of the team, and also uh, like. I'm working with good object-oriented programming because object-oriented programming makes it e is a good skill set for working in a team. Um, procedural code, uh, it, it doesn't make it as easily uh, the code isn't as easily as easily scalable and transferable to other um, parts of the project. Yeah, a question over there. Yep. So, so when it comes to like looking at people's GitHub accounts, because like I know that you can see like the frequency that people have been posting code, and one of the things that I'm worried about is I just got laid off from my company, but I've been working for them for six months. And in the last six months, everything that I did was for them. So being that I no longer have access to their repos, you don't yeah, well, you can't, like- you can't, you can't, I wouldn't suggest ever posting code from the, no, like your the, company, because if you, if you posted code from another company that you worked at, then I'm gonna assume you're gonna do it here too. No, but uh, like I'm asking, because right now, it looks like I haven't done anything okay. for the last six months, well, because- I mean, So not in the show for it. Yeah, yeah, but how many hours did you work for your company for a week? Uh, like, <laughs> sorry, I worked five days a week, eight hours a day, but- Yeah, so then you have another, <laughs> so you work 40 hours a week, so you have another- I also have kids though, so that- That makes it harder, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it, makes, it does make it difficult, but I mean, you have to find time for it. Uh, I mean, if you if you have GitHub, like, because when, like when I'm, when a lot of people are looking at the code, they're not going to know what's going on in your. Are uh, they just going to look at repos that are already there? Because like, they it's not that I don't repos. have any, but it's well, just because a lot a lot of people like they put it private, so I mean you can make it on private. So like, it's, so it doesn't matter how often you're, like I'm not going to look, or I don't think anyone's really looking at how often you're actually putting stuff into it. Okay. In there, so, they're just looking at the quality of the code. Okay. The quality of the code is all that counts. But you can post stuff every single day, but if it's, the quality of the code is poor, no one's gonna care. Like, uh, I've never uh, at Crowded at my last company. I mean, uh, that I worked for, we never looked at. Uh, I don't think it was ever discussed how often somebody was posting. Okay, because I heard something different. I heard that a lot of people do look to see how frequently you commit things. Because so, if you're working on something and well, you only commit they, it when it's done. Like that's bad. <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, it, all that counts is the quality. If the code is high quality, it's that's first and foremost. If it's a tie between two applicants, maybe that will happen. But if the code is of high quality, 